Welcome to this quick start video for Model Ethics Complete plus 3D Library for ANSYS HSS. In this quick start video, we'll go over several topics. What is the Model Ethics Complete plus 3D Library? Why are Model Ethics models important? We will discuss what are Model Ethics Microwave Global Models, and we will also offer procedures and tips for using Model Ethics models. What is the Model Ethics Complete Plus 3D Library? This is Model Ethics Premier product. It is a large collection of simulation models for passive RF and microwave components and consists of several sub-libraries. The Complete Plus 3D Library consists of the CLR Library, which is a collection of capacitor, inductor, and resistor component models. These are the microwave global models that we will be discussing later. And the Complete Plus 3D Library also includes a set of 3D geometry models. These models are based on the physical dimensions and material properties of specific components. These are set up for full wave EM simulations and are encrypted to protect manufacturer IP. Another benefit of the Model Fix Library is that it comes with example projects to help users get up and running quickly. Model Ethics Microwave Global Models are models for surface mount capacitor, inductors, and resistors. They cover the full range of part values in the component series. In addition to part value scalability, Microwave Global Models scale with substrate as well as solder pad size, giving designers a great degree of flexibility in their designs. These models are very useful in electromagnetic simulation, as the effects of solder pads can be removed from the model using different sim modes. This allows designers to simulate pads as part of their layout. The models are also compatible with statistical simulation and optimization, and some have the option to select mounting orientation as well. So when are equivalent circuit models sufficient for design success? Traditionally, measurement-based equivalent circuit models are the best solution for surface mount passive components and discrete or mimic active devices. The advanced pad treatment available in our passive component models as well as many active component models, allows the user to de-embed solder pad effects from the equivalent circuit model. The user can then include their own custom pads as part of an EM co-simulation. This is a very popular approach among our customers, and they have reported achieving first-pass design success with rather complex designs. These equivalent circuit models are flexible and can be simulated quickly. However, equivalent circuit models are developed in isolation and generally cannot account for component-to-component -component coupling or other interactions with the component's environment. Here's an example of a circuit where equivalent circuit models and planar EM co-simulation were able to accurately predict the fabricated circuit performance. Shown here is a 5 GHz elliptic high-pass filter originally designed using New Hertz Technologies filter solutions software. This particular filter was built on a 20 mm Rogers 4003C substrate and uses a combination of discrete SMD components, which are the capacitors, and distributed elements, which are the radial stubs, to achieve the desired filter response. The measurement data is shown in the dashed blue line. The circuit simulation results are shown in red and provide a reasonably good prediction of the measurement data performance. However, compare this to the improved results using planar EM co-simulation, shown in magenta. Using EM co-simulation, we were better able to capture the out-of-band performance. So when are 3D simulations needed? When using components in close proximity to each other or other structures where coupling is likely, 3D simulations are crucial to design success. In this example, an evaluation board for a 2.4 GHz SMD antenna was simulated with a matching network of inductors in close proximity. As can be seen from the E-field plot shown, there is coupling occurring between the components in this layout that the designer may need to address. In this example, three capacitors are being simulated in close proximity in chunk configuration on a 50 ohm line. The distance between the capacitors is being varied from one to five substrate heights in this animation. This demonstrates the strength of the component to component coupling seen in this particular configuration. Here are the S parameter results for the capacitor coupling example shown on the previous slide. On the left, a comparison of measurement data shown with symbols and circuit simulation of the layout, shown in solid lines, is shown for the three capacitor spacings. As can be seen, there is a notable shift in the measurement results from what the circuit simulation alone predicts. On the right, the measurement is compared to a 3D simulation of the same layout with the capacitors. Notice that the 3D simulation is accurately predicting the shift seen in the measurements. 
This is a plot tracking the shift in the first resonant frequency shown on the previous slide for the circuit simulation, 3D simulation, as well as measurement data. The largest discrepancy occurs for the closest capacitor spacing, as would be expected since the circuit simulation is unable to capture this behavior. As the spacing is increased and therefore coupling decreases, the three results show a better match. In a similar example, two shunt inductors were placed in close proximity, and the shift between circuit simulation and measurement data can be seen in the top plot. Compare this to the accuracy that the 3D simulation provides in the bottom plot, and it can be seen that 3D simulations offer designers a great advantage in predicting and correcting these sorts of shifts prior to fabrication, saving time and money. In our final example, a co-simulation combining 3D simulation of a QFN package mounted on an aluminum motherboard as well as measurement data of a mimic amplifier is shown. The green trace shows a measurement of the mimic amplifier in isolation. No bond wires or packaging are included. The blue symbols show a measurement of the mimic mounted inside of the QFN package. The red trace shows the result of the 3D co-simulation of the package, bond wires, motherboard, as well as the S-parameter data of the mimic in isolation. Now we will demonstrate how to use the Modolithics library in ANSYS HBSS. Our first demo will be accessing the Modolithics library in an ANSYS electronics desktop project. We will show you where to find the microwave global models, as well as where the 3D geometry models are located in the palette. We will also cover palette organization as the models are organized by vendor. We will cover the various model parameters available, as well as what are SIM mode and pad mode. For more details on this, please see App Note 57 on our website. We will also get familiar with additional features like solder mask, solder paste, etc. We will show you how to access model information data sheets as well as the information that is covered by these data sheets. We will go over where to find example projects, the user manual, and release notes, as well as where to find application notes, model listings, and other literature on our website. The Model Ethics Library offers designers many distinct advantages one of which being consistent measuring and modeling techniques. All of our models are measurement validated and are documented with a model information data sheet. The models also include advanced features such as scalability to precisely customize your design, real life parasitic effects, mode options to remove these parasitics, and flexible treatment of solder pads. We offer exceptional EDA support for our products and support many different EDA tools. Special order and custom data and modeling is available as well. Please check out the Model Ethics website for more information. Now let's go over how the Model Ethics Library looks in ANSYS HBSS. The Model Ethics Library is organized by vendor, so to see the full listing of library models, just click the plus sign next to each vendor name. To add a model to your schematic, simply drag and drop, and now you'll be able to modify component properties by double clicking on it. From the Component Properties dialog window, you can modify everything about this component. You could change the part value, you can change the substrate on which the component is mounted, and also from here you can change the SIM mode and pad mode settings. SIM mode controls whether or not pads are included as part of the model simulation. The default setting for SIM mode is the full parasitic model. Another commonly used option for SIM mode would be the no pad stacks option. This removes the pads from the model simulation and allows the user to simulate the pads as part of their layout. The pad mode parameter controls how the pads appear in the layout. The default setting for this parameter is to use whatever sim mode is using. However, the user may choose to force the pads to be visible in the layout, and they may also choose the pads to never be visible in the layout. The tolerance parameter can be used for statistical analysis, and if sim mode is set to zero, the user can also adjust pad size by using the pad width, length, and pad gap parameters. Some of our capacitor models also have an orientation switch, allowing the user to choose whether the part is mounted in a horizontal or vertical orientation. Additional parameters available to the user would be the solder mask, solder paste, pad angle, and padded model parameters. The solder mask and solder paste parameters control the inclusion of a solder mask or solder paste layer in your layout. The pad angle and pad and model parameters give the user additional control over the pads. To view the model fixed data sheet, go to the component tab in the properties dialog window and then go to the info field. Now the data sheet will open up. 
Model information data sheets contain a lot of useful information about how the model was developed. Things such as case size, part value range, validation frequency range, substrates used to extract the model, and pad sizes are included. Also, model reference planes and other useful information can be found under the technical notes section. Similarly to microwave global models, 3D component models can be added to an HSS design by going to the component libraries window. Here you will be able to see the model of Pix 3D library. Once again, all of the models are organized by vendor, and by expanding each item, you'll be able to see the full model listing. To add a 3D model to your design, simply drag and drop, just as we did with the microwave global models, and you will see the 3D model in your design window. To view the model information data sheet for a 3D component model, simply go to the 3D component name under the project tree, and from here you'll see an info tab. Navigate to the help field, and the 3D component model data sheet will open up. Once the model of fixed library is installed on your computer, all of the example projects will be available under the C Model Ethics Examples for ANSYS HFSS folder. Model Ethics application notes related to HFSS can also be accessed from this folder. The release notes and user manual will be available under the Model Ethics documentation folder in the installation location on your hard drive. The Model Ethics website is the best place to go for information about our model offerings, as well as resources for designers. You can view the full Model Ethics library listing by going to the Products tab and then by navigating to the desired sub-library. The complete library will show all passive, active, and system-level component models available. To view the 3D model listing, go to the 3D Models section. To view Model Ethics application notes, simply go to the Literature tab and then navigate to the Application Notes link. If you need support, please don't hesitate to contact us by going to the Support tab on our website and then either sending us an email or giving us a call. Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed this quick start video. Please contact us if you have any questions or need assistance.